Friday Night Frenzy. Brought to you by these fine local sponsors. Good evening, Western Slope, and welcome to week number three of your favorite time of the week, Friday Night Frenzy. Another busy week on the Western Slope. Let's not waste any more time and jump right into the football and head over to Stoker Stadium where the Fruit of Wildcats hosted the Falcons of Skyline who made the five-hour drive to Grand Junction. And it was an extremely sunny night at Stoker. Sunglasses were a must, and Fruita wasted little time getting right into what they do, running the football and sustaining drives. They had no trouble going right down the field on drive one, punching it in here with a one-yard QB sneak from Amari Wilson. After getting giving up 58 points last week, this Wildcat defense was determined to get after it, and they did. Nice tackle for loss from Tatum Williams. But Skyline's offense punched back as Ramon Carson burst through the defense, and he could go all the way. No, a shoestring touchdown saving tackle by Van Carter Vance. Nice play, but just a few plays later, Skyline quarterback Gentry Swanson delivers a nice pass, pass and Trent Howell grabs it in stride and glides to the house. Falcons went for two, but didn't get it. It's seven to six, Fruta. Ensuing Wildcat drive, quick handoff to Sharp Wyatt, and in the blink of an eye, he is off to the races, and it's a race Wyatt will win. A 50-yard scamper for the senior back. It's 14 to six, and you know Waldo was pumped to see that, and he's pumped to see this too. After another long drive for Fruto, Wilson punched it in again with a one-yard score. The Wildcats got a stop, got it back, and ran it back with a long drive at a one-yard score once again. It may not be the most entertaining way to score, but it wears down your opponent and the Fruita triple option wore down the Falcon defense tonight. But Skyline put a drive together and capped it off here with a perfectly executed screen and easy score for Ramon Carson. Skyline cuts into Fruita's lead at 28 to 12. Now with under a minute left in the half, Fruita is forced to pass and yep, Amari Wilson can do that too. A huge completion down the field to Carter Vance. This offense doesn't pass much, much, but when it does, Vance is off in the target. With just nine seconds left in the half, Skyline forgets to cover Andres Palafox on the wheel route, and it doesn't get much easier than that. Fruit up three scores at the half, and in half two, it was more of the same. A sneak right up the middle from Wilson, and now he heads outside and turns on the Jets, bowling defenders all the way down to the one, and Wilson says, hey, why waste time? Hurrying up to the line and the QB sneak once again. Another touchdown for Wilson. Make that four so far for the senior quarterback. Fruta is running away with this one. Now up 41 to 12. And the Wildcats avenge last week's blowout loss with a blowout win this week. 55 points scored for the Wildcats as they get over 500 at 2-1 and, and keep the Falcons Winless. Next up for Fruta is a trip all the way to Aurora to face Grandview next Saturday. Also at Stoker Stadium last night, we had a big time rivalry as Central took on Grand Junction. And if there was one word to describe this game, it was turnovers. We had them early and we had them often, including right here on the first drive for Central. Gordy Steidel recovers Dakota Cowden's fumble, but on the next drive, Tigers quarterback Will Applegate rolling to his right overshoots his man and Jamarcus Cameron is there for the pick back to back weeks with a pick for Cameron next drive for Central to give it right back as multiple Tigers rip the ball from the arms of Asher Carter and the giving and taking folks it did not stop on the ensuing drive for Junction Applegate fumbles now and after a scrum for the football Central recovers I mean that had to be it on fumbles right wrong for the fourth time in the first half a fumble is lost and the Tigers recover. Junction led 7-0 at the half, but in the end it was the Warriors of Central who took down Grand Junction scoring three touchdowns in the second half en route to a 21-13 win. And with the loss, the Tigers now fall to 0-3. It's a tough pill to swallow for GJ because they fought so hard in this one. And Central goes over 500 at 2-1 on the year. Next up, the Warriors head down to Durango to face the Demons in Junction. will host Mountain Range at Stoker Stadium next Friday. Now it's time to send it over to the second member of our crew, Chad Roderick, who was in Delta tonight for a big-time Western Slope showdown between the Panthers of Delta and the Bulldogs of Palisade. Chad, what went down in Delta? Well, it was a great game down south in Delta between the Panthers and the Palisade Bulldogs. Let's check it out. 
Now here we go, Delta in green, Palisade in white as we start this game off at Delta High School. Delta's ball, Ty Reed takes the low snap. He's got a man open to his right and it's caught by Brett Leho and he's wide open and he's gone down the sideline. Touchdown, Panthers at 7-0 Delta and man, what a way to start off this opening drive. Now, here we go next up, Palisade ball and it's going to be dropped and it's almost picked up by Delta, but Gail Reed hangs onto it. That was a close one. Now back to Delta, Reed hands it off to Giovanni Romero and he goes down the edge to the sideline. See you number 22 and up the Panthers go up 14 to zero in the first. Keaton Everett takes a snap for Palisade. Nobody's open. He's going to take off and he's going to pick up about 15 yards on his own on the QB scramble. Now that's going to set up a field goal try and it's good. Palisade gets on the board 14 to three here in the second quarter. Now Delta's turn. Reed rolls to his right. He slings it. He's going to be picked off by Easton Embry, who's going to pick up a ton of yards on the INT. Palisade in the red zone. Everett rolls to his right, looking for a man. And he's going to find one. That's Nathaniel Umberger with the touchdown. And we've got a game, folks. Delta lead Palisade 14-10 at the half. Let's see who came out on top. And it was all Delta in the second half because Palisade would not score again. But the Panthers did. Delta wins this one 35-10. And this Delta team looks even better than last year's squad that made the state championship game. Now they're on the road to doing it again this year. Geez, Will, that one was crazy. Back to you for more football. Yeah, how about that? The Delta football team, they just don't stop. Down in Montrose tonight, the Red Hawks suffered their second loss of the year following to a really good Erie team. But how about the Rifle Bears? Boy, Rifle, they got a huge win tonight coming back against Glenwood Springs. And that sets up a huge matchup next week as Rifle takes on, uh, takes on Delta over in Rifle. Rifle, that's their first home game of the, of the season next week. A huge matchup there. And how about Cedar Edge, folks? Cedar Edge staying perfect on the season in dominant fashion. 41 to nothing is the score. The Bruins are off to a hot start this year, and they will look to stay perfect next week when they head to North Folk. And speaking of North Folk, the Miners are in action tomorrow at home against Grand Valley. 11 a.m. kickoff tomorrow, but that concludes this week's edition of Friday Night Frenzy. But for news, weather and sports 24 hours a day, go to westernslopenow.com and don't just have a great weekend. Have a wonderful weekend.